And here's studies on potato and white rice consumption. White potato, and I'm explaining that, white potato with a person that's overweight or diabetic is going to make things worse, not better. And the studies show that it's not the sour cream or the butter on the potato that's been well accounted for and well tested. Some people argue where the potatoes look bad in studies, increased risk of diabetes, and increased risk of cancer because they're, they're what people are using on the potato. That's not true. It's the glaze. We know it's not true because obviously the damage from the potato is proportional to the people's body weights so that as people who are lower body weights and thinner don't show the damage and people as they get heavier show more cancer promotion and more diabetes promotion from the potato as they get heavier demonstrating it's the glycemic effect of the potato that comes more dangerous as people put on more fat. Did you follow that? We make great mashed potatoes at, in our recipes at the retreat. Here's how we do it. And by the way, the potatoes of yesteryear that you got that were started in Peru were little tiny things that were colorful and fibrous that they weren't even high glycemic compared to the big Idaho and the giant potatoes we get today. So the real potatoes that you probably would have eaten had you lived 20,000 years ago wouldn't have even, you know, would have been, wouldn't been like the modern potato that's bred to make French fries and potato. Whatever. So we, we make cauliflower mashed potato but we take like a lot of cauliflower with garlic nutter made with roasted garlic and hemp seeds and a little cashews and a little spinach and, and fried onion. We fry the onion and just wash it up in a hot pan with water. We make the, and then we throw in like a couple of fingerling potatoes, a couple of those red fingerlings of the Yukon gold potato, in with like eight cups of cauliflower to one cup of potato. And you have, then you have a delicious, it tastes like a really great baked potato, but only one-eighth potato because the cauliflower takes the, the, ta the flavor of the potato, and it tastes really great anyway. You follow what I just said? And here I showed you this slide already demonstrating that all carbohydrates are not equal, and this is not a comprehensive slide. It's just showing you some foods, some particular selected foods, showing you the gradual increase in nutrients and fiber and resistant starch and slowly digestible starches. And I'm also saying it's correlated with the glycemic effects, but also with the anti-cancer potential and the phytochemical concentration. I'm saying beans have a rich source of anti-cancer phytochemicals. They're full of inositol penticus phosphate and other factors that support better immune function, digestive function, and they promote the growth of beneficial bacteria in the gut. So beans in the second meal effect, it means that the meals when you don't eat beans, you're still getting benefit because you ate beans in your diet regularly because beans require so much bacteria development in the gut to digest them well, and the regular eater of beans creates so much of these beneficial bacteria that thicken the microbe, the biofilm, that now slows the movement of glucose into the bloodstream, lowering the glycemic effect of everything you eat. When you have the mango and the oatmeal for breakfast, the glycemic effect of that is, bl is blunted because you were a regular consumer of beans and you have a beneficial bacteria in your gut. And my re didn't I tell you yesterday the four foods, the two raw foods and the two cooked foods that have the most beneficial effect on the microbiome, correct? What are the two raw foods? Right, raw green vegetables and, and, and scallions and onions, the two cooked foods are beans and mushrooms. And you can't Duplicate that with probiotics because probiotics give you a narrow microbiome and the only way you can develop an optimally healthy microbiome is with a wide variety of different types of foods and different types of fibers promoting a wide diversity of bacteria. You can't get a wide diversity of bacteria taking probiotics. You have to do it with food. This um, slide is from my book, The End of Heart Disease. It says to people that, okay, we're all in agreement that processed carbohydrates, white rice, and white flour promote disease because all the arguments from all the people advocating paleo-type diets and meat-based diets is that their argument is always that sugar and white flour are worse than meat. And I'm saying that's an irrelevant argument because who cares if sugar and white flour are worse than meat because they're all bad. Just because one's a little worse or a little better is irrelevant. We still Let's look at diets now. And let's look at those that don't contain sugar and white flour. Let's look at vegetable-based diets that include meat or don't contain meat. Let's do the data on them. You follow now? Agreeingly, let's take those, those high glycemic carbohydrates out of the diet. Let's, mod let's modulate the amount of animal product consumption. And let's see on a diet that already contains no sugar, white flour, high glycemic carbohydrates, as you move 
about between 10 and 20 percent of animal products. By the way, the American diet is 30 percent content of animal products or more. The paleo diets are 50 to 75 percent animal product, and the keto diets are 75 to 90 percent animal products. But let's go into that 10 to 20 percent range. That's the range where most genetics play a role. Because once you're above 25%, everybody eating that diet in that population develops heart disease, and they're all, the whole population's at high risk. And genetics play some role, but not that great of a role, because even people with moderately normal genetics are going to develop heart disease. Like in America, in this country, all Americans develop, heart, develop atherosclerosis, and it's a crapshoot as to who has a heart attack or who doesn't have a heart attack. The people with the most blockages may have a heart attack. The people with the least blockages could have a heart attack. A lot of luck as to just whether a clot happens to occur. A little fissure or a crack develops, like a, and a person develops a heart attack. Boom, they're dead. How many people die with their first heart attack? How many people die on the spot? Well, it's 40% of people don't even make it to the hospital alive. They have their heart attack and they're dead out in the field. They don't even get to the hospital. And about half of those people who have their first heart attack didn't have any signs or symptoms, any, anything that told them they were about to have a heart attack. They didn't even know they have heart disease. They didn't even have to have high blood pressure. Their first symptom of a heart disease was their heart attack that killed them. They never even knew they had a heart attack. They never even knew they had heart disease, and they don't even know it now because they're dead. In other words, it sounds funny, but I'm telling you this to say that don't wait till you develop some disease process and go to your doctor and get a cardiologist and then try fixing yourself because your first symptom of heart disease could be death. Now's the time to start. When's the time to start? It was yesterday. It was a year ago. It was 10 years ago. It was 20 years ago. But, but now, if you didn't start, start now. Because your body is a miraculous self-healing machine when it's fed optimally. And as this slide demonstrates... Genetics play some of a role in the moderate consumption of animal products, but once you get below 5% of calories from animal products in your diet, genetics don't play a role unless you're eating processed foods or, or high glycemic carbohydrates, because there's no heart attacks recorded in history in people populations eating such low level of animal products, and even in, in studies on disease reversal with people with heart disease, the disease generally reverses itself and goes the other direction once you get into that 0 or 5% range. 